On this episode of the Star Trek Universe podcast, we have seen the first episode of Star Trek Picard! Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. I can't believe it! I know! Right after this... Welcome to the Star Trek Universe Podcast. My name is Matthew Carroll. I'm, I'm David C. Robertson. Like, dude, I lost my voice for a second. I was like, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, so <laughs> pumped, man. Uh, this is this is the Trek I've been looking for, man. This is this was uh, nothing, and it wasn't Star Trek. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it also like clearly is new. It's updated. It feels like a modern show with the actors and the characters I love and mm-hmm. storylines that I'm incredibly interested in because of both nostalgic affection, but also it's just it's just good storytelling. And I, 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 from you know, if you're listening to this, you've probably already seen Picard, but we are posting mm-hmm. this like two hours after it drops. So spoiler free, just give me some thoughts, Dave. What do you think? Um, spoiler free. It is uh, everything I wanted to be so far and more. I don't have a negative thing about it. I have nothing, nothing negative to say so far about this thing. Um, yeah, I, I, this is this is a strange position to be in. We've mm-hmm. we've been covering a lot of Trek, mm-hmm. uh, and with the exception of some epi- episodes, most everything we're like, well, this is good, but here are the things we have problems with. I don't have a problem with this. <laughs> about fifteen minutes in, I like I went to go get uh, some food. And uh, my wife has not been able to sit down and watch it yet. And she was like, how is it? And I was like, oh, it's awful. I'm not watching it anymore. It's not canon. There's like, they've just ruined canon. She's like, really? I said, no, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, they, they, they did kind of steer clear of canon for the most part, which is like, well, I mean, not, not none of canon. I should, I should say like uh, aesthetics. They steered clear of most of the Star Trek aesthetics. We got very little like Star Trek ships, and at least classic mm-hmm. ones. Um, it's well, almost, almost almost all new, except for the Enterprise D. Um, well, we did we did get like, uh, as far as I could tell, the Stargazer perfectly. You know, in in the Enterprise E in, in oh quantum, in the ship. You're uh, right in the ship form. Yeah, that's true. In the, yeah, in the little uh, the quantum storage unit or whatever it was. That was neat. Yeah. Quantum that storage was awesome. Unit. How cool Captain is that? Card day. Oh, just they knew exactly what to do to get me all on board, man. They just knew exactly the things. Uh, yeah. Oh God. Okay. So it's great. <laughs> it's wonderful. Let's let's dive in spoilers because there's really not much to say except it's just great in a non-spoiler way. So uh, mm-hmm. spoiler time. Uh, okay. Let's talk about this. Sh- let's talk about the show, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, w- w- it's it's just great. It's just great. Uh, that is not a spoiler. It's not a spoiler. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, we don't have to jump right into spoil. I don't know. What, what, what do you always say? It's, it's Data's daughter. Uh, that's that's the big that's the big spoiler. That's the big thing. We've got Data's daughter, and even the biggest bigger spoiler is she dies, which I could not believe. I could not believe they they like actually killed her off. I thought I thought it was going to be you know she's an AI, so I thought oh she's gonna. Uh, have moved her consciousness or she's there's going to be multiple versions of her and that's mm-hmm. that's kind of the case there's multiple versions of her uh that, but it's not her it's a different it's a different version of the daughter who has uh you know been who who has lived a different life so this this was an individual who died and that's that was tragic yeah. absolutely tragic yeah that was rough and uh i just i thought maybe they were going to somehow trick us or with that but nope that's that's sad yeah it's really sad her horrifying death w- seems like it was real and I, I didn't expect that honestly i still and i'm still kind of in shock about it and i'm still uh kind of reeling from that moment her her because she's terrified it's really awful mm-hmm. Ugh, kind of, i hate it and, and like i know from um from like a production standpoint, it's like, oh, she was sort of the proto Soji or whatever, and like mm-hmm. we're, from now on, we're going to know this other character. But man, I, I really I cared about her from the very beginning, like from the moment she's sitting and having this, having the wine with her boyfriend, and her boyfriend dies, and she freaks out, and all the conversations Picard had to have with her, where he's trying to explain to her. 
that she's an android. Like she died terrified, man. Died terrified, not knowing who or what she was. Like, yep. Ah, the story of Dodge is awful. <laughs> that was rough, man. That and when, was super rough. And when he when Law when Law finally meets Picard and he realizes who she is, and I, one of the most, the move, most moving moving speech was, "You are dear to me in ways you cannot understand. I will never leave you." Picard mm-hmm. says, "Oh." <laughs> that, that, that like I started to cry at that moment, and then two minutes later in the episode, she's dead. I was just yep. Oh, I I I'm I'm heartbroken over the death of Dodge. Um, and and, and, and all my little theories and like thinking about what what's going on with this character, who is she? <laughs> all of that just kind of falls by the wayside, and I just I care, you know. Yeah, that was really well done. Yeah. Yeah, and and now I've got to worry worry about this other girl. This what was her name? Soji. Soji, Soji Asha Soji? was her name. Yeah, I, I've got to worry about her, and she's working in a friggin' Romulan Borg cube. What is happening? Yeah, well, <laughs> no, I, I don't know that it's a Romulan Borg cube. There, well, there was a Romulan. Uh, That's true. Symbol. You're right. You're right. There were Romulan ships as well going in and out. Mm-hmm. But it seems he said, "What does he say? You spend your day fixing broken people." Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's okay. <laughs> Just diving into the 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 Mars of it all and the the, mm-hmm. the rogue synth attack. Man, I was mad at that reporter lady. I was mad at that interviewer. Oh yeah, it was at me too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. <laughs> that man specifically said no. Well, okay. no, 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 no. Now that's different, though. She, uh, she got him to talk about it. Actually, I, I wasn't mad at that. I was only mad because I was like being defensive of Picard. But she actually asks questions about data to try to get him to talk about the rogue synth attack instead mm-hmm. of actually asking him about it. So it's, she actually pulled a little, little, uh, little trick on him. Oh, I don't think that was... No, she straight out was, like, asking him, and why did you... What's the real reason you left Starfleet? Like, she was going for it, dude. Oh, like, uh, maybe, maybe, was... maybe, maybe, maybe I missed that. Uh, like, I, didn't, I didn't miss it, but it's. I've only seen this once so far, so I'm gonna... I mean, I've only seen it once, too. Oh, I know. Uh, but I just... I kind of catch that. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was... It was it, I was mad at her, too. But the, the Rogue Synth attack... I feel like this is this is another mystery that we've got. Mm-hmm. We, we 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 kind of solved the mystery of Dodge to some degree. I mean, solved the mystery of Dodge and Dodge is gone, but now we know she's a sister. So now we we mm-hmm. have this we have this story setting up where Picard is in the search of his like sort of goddaughter, as it were. Mm-hmm. Which is man, that's I love it. I love it so much. Here, here's something that I've I find interesting, and I mean, we were just talking about how. Uh, or I don't, maybe we weren't. I don't remember. Um, Data uploaded when when Law died. He uploaded yes. her memories into him. Yes. And he uploaded his memories into B four. Uh huh. But you know, if he was still talking to Maddox, and I love that they're talking about Maddox. I love that we I don't loved know where it he is so I, much. Um, oh my god! I, the fact I, that Maddox could sh- could show up in the in the yeah. real. I just I, I said it in our in our cast about Measure of a Man, uh, whatever. Uh, 15 weeks ago or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. I said that they need, if they're going to have all an Institute where they have all mm-hmm. these androids, they need to mention Maddox or even if it's just named the Maddox Institute or something like that. And sure enough, we get a mention of Maddox in the, in an Institute talking about androids. I was like, yes, this yes. is so good. Yes. Now here, here's the thing though. I don't know. I was just thinking about this the other day. I was thinking like, we never got an on-screen confirmation, I don't think. But how much you want to bet that Data uploaded lore into his own positronic system before mm. or after he shut lore down? Because I, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. What, what if? What if they they make the twins? These two twins, and he goes after. Uh, he, he meets Dodge, and mm-hmm. he protects. He tries to protect her, fails in protecting her, and then goes after her twin. But it, she's actually somehow like a lore clone instead of a data clone. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Yeah. No, that's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting. But I, I, I don't want it to be true. Yeah. Because I really want. Uh, I really want. 
uh, this, 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 I really want this to be a, you know, successor to data that, that we can, we can care about. Um, I, mm-hmm. I, I, I had, for some reason, I, we would wa- rewatch so much of Star Trek uh, mm-hmm. and, and so much related to what we'd seen. For some reason today, I sat down and I was like, you know what, the episode I did not watch, and, I, and for some reason I feel like I should, is The Offspring. The Offspring, yeah. Which, which, and I sat down this afternoon and watched it, and that's the episode with Lol, and she dies. And when this episode, that, when, when she said daughter, I was, well, first off, when we meet Dodge, and she says she, uh, is she, she majored in artificial intelligence and quantum consciousness, uh-huh. I was like, oh, she's an android. Oh, she's law. Mm-hmm. She is law. She's a hundred percent law. Like that was, I, and then when they said it was daughter, I was like so in that she was law. You know, and 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 then I thought about the episode because I literally watched it tonight. And what happens in that episode is the admiral comes after law and says he's going to take her away, and then she suddenly dies. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh my gosh, Data faked Law's death to escape. You know, the Federation testing on her. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was where we were going, but no, it would, it, like, it was, it was, I, but it totally made sense. So, so, so as, yeah. soon, as soon as she said that about her being law, uh, 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 and uh, consciousness expert or whatever, uh, Android consciousness expert, I was like, Oh, she's law. And then as soon as she started fighting, I was like, no, she's river. River, yeah, I knew you were going to make that connection. <laughs> she's, she's uh, River Tam, River from Tam Firefly. from Firefly. Yeah, this was absolutely a River Tam moment. She got activated and like goes off. I loved it. Yeah, that was great. Now, yeah, but I'm if I understood it correctly, she's pretty much like the culmination. Like they could regrow Data's entire memory banks from from her or from her sister, right? That's that. Well, that's what uh, I don't. I don't. I don't know exactly the, that, that 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 whole the whole science explanation was really dicey uh, that, that was the one part okay we said we had nothing negative to say and i have almost nothing negative to say but the the one thing was that whole scientific explanation was real hand wavy that was kind of classic next generation uh pet techno babble <laughs> well i mean this is like theoretical science that's in the 24th century or actually probably 25th at this point or like sure. close to it three years out it's actually set in 2397 so it's uh you know just just a little while away from from the 25th century here yeah so um uh yeah i i i don't mind it i've i've never minded the the quote-unquote lack of science in in star trek i mean it's all fantasy man no like, right 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 me neither uh this particular one was like like the fact that, that it had to be a twin like the, that mm-hmm. seemed like a leap there was nothing in there that was like well because of the way they're mad i don't know it could have it could have used a little more fleshing out but I, i'm fine with it i'm fine with it and it, i you know i'll be honest i i'm gonna have a real problem uh with with any criticism for anything that came out of Allison Pill's mouth, because I just love her. Oh yeah, <laughs> she was wonderful. She's absolutely wonderful in this. I uh, yeah, I always like. I don't know. It's some kind of a weird crush I've had on her ever since Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, no, and uh, she's yep. Yeah, newsroom. Yeah, I'm, she's great every in time that I see too. her, I'm like, yay. Yeah, she's really I'm, she's really great. I'm sorry, I saw rainbows and sparkles when she was talking. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's I think it's somewhat deliberate. I, her like, her she's like she's like, I, I, I'm gonna really uh, charismatically explain this science that is kind of weird and doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, but but I'm gonna charismatically explain it and then we just move on and, and that's fine. I'm fine with it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not gonna be mad at it. Um, okay, we, we we I keep wanting to talk about this rogue synth attack and what it means for the Romulans. Um, so it seems like everyone that was after Dodge is Romulan. Mm-hmm. I, I love that in the first scene, one of them speaks Romulan and they, mm-hmm. they say, speak English, uh, just to not give away that they're Romulan, but they don't say yeah. that it's Romulan. Uh, and so, so I guess if you're a big enough Star Trek linguophile, you would have known they were Romulan from that first scene, which I just think that's really neat. <laughs> Yeah, it's a neat call. I did not know what they, what language they were speaking myself, but I guess if you're big enough Star Trek, whatever. Yeah, uh, but I did not know. I did not either. <laughs> uh, so, so I want. I think one of the big mysteries uh, that we're going to have going forward is like they ne- they say they never figured out why the synths attacked. 
Did you? Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's going to be an ongoing mystery. I think that uh, something was done to cause the synths to attack. And it probably had to do with, P- with a faction within the Federation not wanting uh, the Romulan um, exodus to happen. Hmm. That's that's my best best guess at this you point. You want to you know what we know you want to know what my guess is? Section thirty one. No, well, maybe that, that's my best guess. <laughs> it could it could be, but uh, my best guess is just like an insurrection, their ethical subroutine kicked in. And they were trying to stop something. Hmm. Mm, that's interesting. But killing a planet seems like a weird thing for ethical sub. Killing a planet that leads to the, the death of an entire, like, uh, sect- sector of space seems like a weird... Like, what are you stopping at that point that, yeah. that isn't worth... That's worth all those lives? What are you start trying to stop? And see, I, I think it's more. I think it's more likely. Well, they also said that they had never, they've never found another robot mm-hmm. to as- attain sentience. So right. So I don't think I don't think the robots, these synths, were making these decisions for themselves, or mm-hmm. may- maybe they were, maybe they were. Uh, but I have a feeling that uh, these synths were uh, being told to attack the and, and, and Utopia Planitia was a. Um, Sacrifice. Yeah, well, no, I was saying it was a sacrifice. They were willing to. <laughs> I, I knew it. I know what Utopia Planitia is. I, I don't know the Romulan language, but I know what Utopia Planitia is. Come on, man. Um, I mean, I don't know what you know. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Um, um. <laughs> so, so my, my best guess is the Utopia Planitia uh, shipyards were supposed to. So, so, were supposed to be some sort of sacrifice that they thought it was will, they were willing to make to destroy mm-hmm. the, the the fleets of ships they were they were they had um, they were they were sending out to save the Romulans uh, mm-hmm. so that the Romulan people would perish. And um, my other part of that is I don't think they meant to nuke the whole planet because yeah. they, they said in the in that video they say the rogue synth attack kills 3000 people. I think that was the willing that was the sacrifice they were willing to make, like probably mm-hmm. someone within Starfleet, probably section 31 uh, or, or maybe even the brass of Starfleet, who knows. I think it was a I think it was like a false flag operation type thing and that uh that whatever they say something about something ignited the something in the atmosphere and, mm-hmm. it, and it's still on fire today and it caused 92 million to die. I, I think it was 92,000, but yeah. Oh really? I thought it was, I thought it was a million. Um, okay. But anyway, they kill off the entire planet of Mars basically. And I don't think that mm-hmm. was on purpose. I think they meant to, to kill the 3000 and meant to destroy the shipyards and then something went wrong and they ignited that. That, that was just very specific language they used. And I think that, uh, they meant to tell the synths to attack and destroy the ships and, and, and maybe the people around it. And somehow they, there was a mistake made and they destroyed all of Mars. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I would love it if somehow they, they tried to like turn this into a twist where it was like the, the, the ethical routine subroutine came on or whatever. And, and that's the big twist because we suspect like, what I suspect is something like what you're talking about with like the the Federation pulling an Admiral Cartwright and trying to let one of the Federation's oldest enemies burn. Hmm. Admiral Cartwright from Star Trek Six. Um, right. But <laughs> I think they I, I don't trust these guys completely enough to where like I'm like, yeah, that'll be the that'll be the thing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with the, <laughs> it was the ethical subroutine, <laughs> like something was going on there, and and maybe that part what the ninety two thousand was still an accident, but uh, I think they'll try to do something with that. Yeah, I, I think for sure. I think that's going to be one of the bigger mysteries of the season. I think that mm-hmm. what what because I think these Romulans. <laughs> I think we they lost a lot of Romulans as a, a lot of Romulan lives, or as Picard mm-hmm. said, lives. Um, oh, it was so good, so good, man! It's the so Starfleet good. Starfleet is no longer Starfleet. Oh. Oh. It's so good. It's so good. I love the allusion to Dunkirk, which I've never seen the movie, and I know a little bit about the story of Dunkirk, but I'm going to go watch mm-hmm. that movie this week just to know more about Dunkirk. Which is probably not the best way to learn about Dunkirk, but 
It's the easiest. Mm -hmm. Well, Wikipedia is the easiest for me. I can just kind of glance over and be like, oh, okay. Yeah, like I know, I know what happened, and and th that actually, I forget. This is really sad. I was on Trek Cast this week, and mm -hmm. I also listened to a lot of other podcasts, Star Trek podcasts, and I don't know which one of them was talking about this, but one of them was complaining about how uh, it, it the, at the shipyards where the synth attack is happening, it's all old ships. Mm -hmm. And someone was like, well, you know, they just needed ships. To, they were like 100-year-old ships, and they were like, yeah, they just needed ships to go get uh, people from Romulus, so... Uh, like it, it makes sense they'd be old ships, and I like that. That's kind of confirmed here because that's what mm -hmm. that's what happened with Dunkirk. Uh, is mm. is that um? In uh, do you know the story of Dunkirk at all? I uh, no, I'm not I, terribly. I, I know very little, uh, and I probably only know it because when the movie came out, they did a lot of like documentaries and stuff around it. But basically, uh, the British fleet mm -hmm. went went was was almost destroyed in I think World War One. Hmm, I may be wrong. Anyway, the British fleet was almost destroyed, and, and, mm -hmm. and all these servicemen were just basically left to die. And so, a bunch of old, sh like fishing boats, and like like all these civilian vessels just went across the ocean to pick up all the all the the army men or whatever, okay. all the navy men uh, who mm -hmm. were like stranded on boats that were like being attacked from the air and stuff constantly. So it's like this, this amazing story of like the civilian population rallying together to go save a bunch of, uh, you know, a bunch of army and Navy men. Gotcha. Uh, and so th that's exactly what it sounds like here. Like these hundred year old ships that are like old ships that, you know, aren't, they aren't the military. They aren't the most, uh, you know, advanced thing. They're just being used. They need, they need a bunch of, cruisers to go pick up uh mm -hmm. the stuff I, I thought that that was really neat i love this because this explains a big plot hole or a bit unexplained thing in the 2009 star trek movie which is why did the federation not try to go and and get the romulans out if right. they knew about it right i want to know what picard did because mm. we still don't know uh his 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 friends say uh we, we still know what you did and 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 when the reporter is interviewing him she said, you know the federation decided to not save the people of romulus and he was like uh yeah but i i i wasn't going to listen to the federation basically i did i did what i had to do it was it was our duty to save as many lives as possible and she's like romulan lives like, no lives um and that's mm -hmm. so so he did something to try to save as many people as possible and I love that. I love that. Here's here's my here's my guess of how, here's my guess of how he saved lots of Romulans. Okay. Total 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 idea. Uh, he went around from planet to planet, storing as many people in his transporter buffers as possible. <laughs> huh. I, I don't know. Seems like a good idea, right? You just uh, uh, yeah yeah because you can't fit too many on a ship, but you could fill a lot of people in the transporter buffers if you have big enough hard drives. So basically like fly around the galaxy with one ship saving billions. How cool would that? That's, that's like a Picard worthy thing. I don't know. Anyway, that's, yeah, I'm that's not, my idea. I mean, you know, it's theoretical science. So I mean, I yeah. can't, I can't say, I don't, I don't know. It, it, it would take some techno babble, but that's, uh, it's mm -hmm. just a random thought. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just having fun, man. Scotty lived inside of a transporter buffer for you know 80 years exactly that's where picard got the idea <laughs> by the way man data looks good oh yeah great i yeah that I, I sent you that link they when they started putting out the very new tra the newest trailers and i was like they fixed data yeah 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 I, it never bothered me, but I, I know it bothered i might have bothered some including yourself uh but yeah mm -hmm. they, i think it looks fine i think it's good <laughs> I, it, it actually bothered uh Marina Sirtis and Brent Spiner. <laughs> yeah. He was like, yeah, you know, the early stuff, it didn't look finished. <laughs> and, and, and like Marina Sirtis is like, you looked like shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. All right. So 
I guess Dodge. See, so when all this is going on, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I I thought this we might be in a situation where there's like lots of synths hiding amongst mm-hmm. us, but it's and there still might be. Uh, Maddox could have made f- fifty of these by now, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Dodge does seem to have a mom. Uh, or is she real? I, like there was a part of me that thought maybe Dodge's mom was like part of her programming talking to her. That's interesting. I think the mom is a real person, but I think she's in league with Bruce Maddox. I, I think so too. That That's the way it finally settled for me. But like, yeah. Oh yeah. This, it's so cool. They have the stargazer in there, man. <laughs> like mm-hmm. all his ships, they have all his ships that he's been, I, 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 they don't show them all. I don't think, but uh, the ships that he was captain of. That's so neat. Mm hmm. And they have these little pleasure crews, like his, the captain's uh, cruise vessel or whatever from the one thing, right? Not that, what that one thing is. Um, the captain yes, shuttle, yes, captain yes, shuttle. yes, yes. I yeah. think so. Yeah, yeah. From uh, from the E, from the Enterprise E, right? Yeah, it just like kind of popped out of the top. Yeah, that's on there. That's so cool. Uh, or no, but, but maybe it t- popped out of the bottom. I, think I, thought, it was the I bottom. thought it was the bottom. I thought it was bottom, bottom of the saucer. Yeah. Okay, uh, so. Yeah. What do you, what, what else? Anything else? Oh man. I love all the stuff with Maddox. I I do think we'll eventually get to meet him. Um, Oh yeah. Yeah. I think so. And apparently, apparently Maddox created law. Uh, or I keep calling her lol. I think as Dodge. Dodge. I kept thinking for the first half of the episode, I thought she was lol. So I kept thinking, (laughs) you know, this Dodge. I kept thinking lol. And I'm probably going to call her that forever. Um, (laughs) Uh, okay, so Dodge was apparently created by Maddox. He was she was given a mother somehow. I don't mm-hmm. know if she, I don't know if she was actually. Re- she says something about her father in this episode, and I, I wonder if that is Maddox, like if Maddox yeah. Maddox raised her, or if Maddox you know somehow mm-hmm. just put her with a family, or I, I just don't know the fa- whoever she's with. If if that mother is real and not part of her programming, they they, yeah. they know about the whole thing and know about Picard. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is interesting. This show decanonizes the J.J. Abrams countdown comics. Uh, yes, because Data does not. It, there was no Captain Data. Right. B4 did not go on to become Data. Yeah, it's true. So that's weird. <laughs> it's like how Dumb and Dumber 2 went out of its way to decanonize Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> um sure that's a reference you can make <laughs> okay that's the middle of the night i'm getting punchy uh so I, 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 I'm excited about Soji Asha and, and I know it's partially from the trailers. So I guess spoiler alert, some of this is from the trailers, but clearly that guy that's talking to her is, is, is trying to manipulate her somehow mm-hmm. and knows her secret. Part of that that made me think that was the fact that he's Romulan because all the Romulans are after him. I actually think the Romulans are probably good guys. And I think the Romulans are trying to uncover the plot that the Federation uh, whatever f- splinter faction the Federation caused the Mars attack, which in turn caused the death of so many Romulans. Mm-hmm. I think that uh, someone is, I think this, this group of Romulans, the ones that killed Dodge are actually trying to, uh, try, trying to figure, trying to solve the puzzle of what was, what, what happened at, uh, at Mars to cause that who, who, who's responsible for Mars and then in turn responsible for the death of a lot of Romulans. Yeah. That's, that's my thought. I don't know what my thoughts are. I, I don't know who to trust. Um, <laughs> I kind of feel like, uh, I, my, my wife has been watching, uh, she's been watching sneaky Pete on, on Amazon prime. Yeah. And I watched a few episodes of it and I'm really into it, but she like, she works from home so she can just binge watch stuff. And, uh, she far surpassed me. She's almost over the series. But she, there was, I just keep getting texts and stuff that just say, I don't know which, what's a con and what isn't a con. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of what I feel like here. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't know who's good and who's bad, but, uh, let me, let me ask you this though. Do you think, you think before we'll actually 
be a working thing by the end of this show? Hmm. Do you think uh, Brent Spiner will come back? I you don't. don't. No. Uh, I don't know. I mostly don't know I because I I, I I I read those articles about uh, Brent Spiner not wanting data to 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 data's death to be undone, mm-hmm. and I think that that means he probably doesn't want to like return as data in in in, in or as even as before. And let's face it, no one really wants B4 to be around. Uh, it, we, we would like data back, but we don't really want B4. Well, if B4 is essentially data, if sure, he has like, they, data's they, memories, he would be data. They said in this that he's not. He ne- never was able to achieve that. And mm-hmm. so it'd be kind of retconning to go back and say, like, oh, we figured it out. He's data now. Um, well, well if, he, if, if all of his memories are inside of Soji. Right. Then aren't you doing the same thing? Yes. Well, except it's a different character who's lived a different life. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's it's a, it's just like we t- you know you talk about with Lol and Data. Data, uh, Lol died, but Data took on all of her memories, uh, so she could be remembered. It's 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 the way that androids assimilate the deaths of their 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 uh, uh, family basically, and mm-hmm. that, and I think that's an interesting thing that they're playing with here. So yeah, sh- they'll have data's memories possibly. And clearly they have some of data's memories because they're, they, they have this like deep affection for Picard, at least mm-hmm. uh, Dodge did. But, uh, I don't think they're ever going to be data because they've lived, they've lived an entire life that has made them who they are. Yeah. You know, I think, I think this show is, I think this show was a testing ground for Brent Spiner. And I think if it goes well, and he thinks it looked good, and was I think he might come back. I really do. Okay. I, well, I see that that's the other part of why I don't think he'll come back. I think that it's expensive to do that de aging <laughs> stuff, and I think that doing it for a couple of scenes in a dream sequence is one thing, but like having mm-hmm. him walking around being Data again would be expensive. And I mean, I, think I don't think probably not going to do it. I I wouldn't think that they would like do it extensively. Right. I mean, it's a ten episode season. I think it's, I think it's more. I think it's seasons. more likely in like season three he'll show up as lore. Oh, that would be so good. Yeah, like one good lore episode. Now that 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 I could absolutely oh. see because lore is absolutely still around and alive. That's the other thing mm-hmm. is like they're talking about data and replicating data and like how the positronic brain and how they needed his brain to make it work. They had lore. What happened to lore? Yeah. Why, why did they have to uh, wait? Yeah. Why did they have to use B4's positronic brain that was apparently inferior to do this? Man, what a... I, I think that'll come up. It, it's very possible. Uh, because they never said what happened to Lore's body at the end of Descent. Nope. All we know is Data shut him off. Yep. Data, Data shut him down and decommissioned him or whatever. Uh, in his in his uh, maniacal destruction of androids that he's done his entire life, mm-hmm. um, and <laughs> if they've figured out androids well enough to create androids that are flesh and blood and believe that they're real, I mean we know Doctor Soong had because of Data's mother. I mean I don't see a reason they couldn't figure out how to get Lore's brain back, but. Or data's, you know, transfer data's brain over into lore or whatever. Like, <clears throat> I think Maddox has been doing all this on the sly. I think he's been, he's holed up somewhere doing this secretly. Yeah. No, I think so too. Obviously. Man, yeah. this is fun. This is, I love it, man. Isn't it fun? Isn't I it love, fun, like, speculating what data and lore might be doing these days? It's like, absolutely great. <laughs> it's absolutely fun. And you know what else is fun? Like, They've already created characters I'm interested in who are brand uh-huh. new. Soji seems seems nice. She's she's like she's a she's a human who's out helping Borg uh ex Borg deborg themselves. Like that mm-hmm. that's that's that seems like a noble pursuit. So she's already a person I'm interested in knowing more about. But also we've seen that she has the ability to fight like Dodge did. Mm-hmm. When Dodge leapt like 30, 40 feet to, to fight those Romulans. Yeah. It, was, it was just a blast, man. And it's like combining literally. Boo. No, com- I can't believe you said it was a blast. That's too soon. <laughs> man. <laughs> combining, um, this sort of storytelling where they've actually got 
interesting stuff happening with the um like the ethics of Starfleet and Picard and his past and androids and Borg and all this stuff that's like really interesting ethically and like just from from like the heart of the story, even just Dawes trying to understand if she's a monster because she's been raised to believe androids are monsters, uh, probably because of a lie. Like all of that is, is is fascinating and good storytelling and stuff I'm interested in. But also, I just am going to get to see like a River Tam style android fight. You know, mm-hmm. we know at some point Soji is going to get activated and she's going to flip out and have that fighting ability it's it, it, it's it's very similar like in firefly when we know there's one episode in firefly where river sorry to go off on a total firefly tangent river uses a gun and shoots three men and like really easily and you're like mm-hmm. oh she has that ability and then it's not till the movie that you see it again you know and it's just yeah. that is that's what we got here we got dodge does all this badass stuff and now we just know that's somewhere within soji as well yeah, man. That's that's just fun. It's just total fun. It's nothing to do with like it well it is it's a storytelling device. It's that sort of like it's 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 a Chekhov's gun, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I've never gotten to use the term Chekhov's gun in st- when talking about Star Trek and I always want to make a Chekhov joke. Mhm. And now would be the time, but nothing's coming to me. <laughs> <laughs> I made a I made a Chekhov's gun uh, joke one time while I was talking about the uh, the Star Trek the original series episode Spectre of the Gun, mm. and, and in that episode Chekhov got shot. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> or at least the way as I remember it, he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited about this show, and I'm really excited because right before I watched it, they I saw uh, a headline where it said, said Patrick Stewart officially uh, invited Whoopi Goldberg to come back as Guinan in season two, and I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, like, did you, yes. Did, did you watch yes. that video? No. Yeah, there's a video that he he came on the View, and on the View asked her to come. Uh, being part of Picard. He's like, I have, I have, uh, the showrunner has said I can do this and like asked her to come on the show. And apparently she didn't even know uh, is the way the story is written and the way they act on the show. And she just gets all smiley and excited. And, uh, he's asked her to return for season two. It's so cool. Mm-hmm. That's so <laughs> great. And yeah, I'm excited about that because there was a ton about Guinan and we didn't, we never found out. Like I would love to, Oh my God, I want Q. I want Q back. Oh yeah, I do. Me too. I, and we, I, we don't have to worry about John Delancey being old because, as we know from all good things, he just he looks old sometimes. Yeah, he looks old when he when Picard is old. Well, exactly. That that's something the guys on Trekcast said the other day that when I was on. Oh, cool. Uh, they said, uh, "Of course he can look old. When he appeared to Picard, he appeared as like a forty year old man because he was appearing to a forty year old human, like." Like, of course he appeared as a 40-year-old human, but if he's appearing to a 92-year-old human, he's probably going to appear like a 92-year-old human. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that makes absolute sense. I uh, mean, he literally did it in all good things. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely did. Absolutely did. Um, so, okay, let's see. I think the Romulans hate... Uh, like, I think the Romulans are trying to solve this issue. Um, mm-hmm. And th- they, say, uh, they say in here that... Uh, Creating the sense is a violation of a galactic treaty. Uh huh. Which I, I do you think that has to do with the Romulans? Like, because it seemed. I, I, I wonder who wants the synths outlawed. Is it the, the no. Federation or is it the Romulans? Or if it was knows? the Federation, that would still be a galactic treaty. Uh, that's true. That's true. Because they are multiple planets and everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. Um. I just, it, it, I was, I'm curious how the Romulans feel about synths because it, obviously the synth attack is what caused uh, the Federation to turn inward and protect itself instead of, um, you know, going forward. Yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm really interested to see where all that goes. I think that's like the big mystery of the season. I think figuring figuring all that out. Yeah, I hate that they like. It's it's ridiculous. I mean, if you just have like a rogue group of of sense, yeah, it it would just like there would have to be some like specific big wig thing going on for them to actually like outlaw all synthetic all synthetic life. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it, apparently, it does not. That does not count for holographic. 
Yeah, I did notice that. Um, because they do have a hologram in here, which I, yeah, is I a whole other the... thing is what's happening with holograms. You got the whole uh, holo novel, photons be free, mm-hmm. and all that, all that stuff. Oh, that from, would be great. Yeah, yeah. Bring bring the doctor from Voyager back. <laughs> oh, 100%. 100% they should bring the doctor back. If you don't do that, it wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> in a sense. Uh, ha, ha, ha. They don't make any sense. You know, it's the Federation. It just doesn't make any sense anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I just, I loved Dodge, how she started in this episode. <laughs> like, from the very beginning, she says, uh, and I, 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 so this is, I, I thought she was going to be uh, Data's daughter. I watched that law episode today. And then when she's with her boyfriend at the very beginning, he's like, you look like you have a secret. Is it a happy secret? And she's, and she, she says it is. And that made me think, okay, so she is what her existence is. Whatever the secret is, whatever this big mystery of Dodge is, mm-hmm. is going to be a, a, like a positive, like it's not going to be an, you know, whatever. I was like, I thought that was neat. I, 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 yeah. So that immediately made me think, Oh yeah, it might be. And then she said the Android shit. And I was like, this definitely somehow Data's daughter. Oh. Yeah. You, you know, I was, I was thinking earlier today, I was just, just, you know, I was at work in my own little head Nobody knows what the hell I'm talking about anyway at work. So, but I was just in my head, I was just like, what if somehow he, she's Data's daughter and the daughter of the Borg Queen and the daughter of Locutus? Because, <laughs> like, yeah, you know, yeah, they, they've, if, that they, they could have a whole soup over there in Borg country. Well, I mean, if like, and it's funny that Soji, or is that her name? Soji? Soji. If, she wa- if she's working with the Borg, all right. Yeah. And Bruce Maddox found solace in working with the synthetic life. He used his knowledge to help synthetic, uh, the, you know, organic beings who were abducted and are part synthetic. Um, if he used his expertise for that and he had some sort of connection with the Borg and he used some, some of their technology to like figure out the rest of the way. You know what I mean? Yeah. To techno- like, so, so that, that they could, could, it is possible. Yeah, they could find a way to like, oh, well, I have this from data and also like there's this other AI yeah. program running around in here that was partially the Borg Queen. And you know she like merged with freaking data who had both law and maybe lore inside of his head. Yeah, for sure. So th- 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 there's, th- there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, fun almost doctor who ish ways of like solving all of this and like bringing back almost anyone at this point especially now that we know that one neuron of data can bring back an entire consciousness or at least uh at least <clears throat> the <throat> elements of his consciousness uh that's that's big that's a big piece of tech that they've created in this episode and it kind of make, could bring back a lot of characters yep. um, especially with the connection to the Borg like you mentioned and then he becomes a space baby he goes back in time and becomes control he, yeah could he, they could they could do that <laughs> that that's a reference you could make um <laughs> stop saying that <laughs> Um, uh, it it excites me for Soji the first line that Picard uh, that Dodge says to Picard and she says do you know me and then he doesn't say anything and she says you're not sure how do I know that that Mm -hmm. I loved that man I love it so much I love it so so much I I loved his stirring uh speech about how he's just been laying around waiting to die yeah i haven't been living i've been waiting to die and then he realizes me up man yeah but but now he has a mission he says he has a mission and he's gonna be hard to stop now like uh he's been sitting around because he he's been been dejected because of how the federation has treated uh you know the, the Romulan, the, the 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 androids and the Romulans, these these people that he worked his entire career to try to bring uh, closer together to the Federation, uh, or, and and bring androids 
like rights, you know, mm-hmm. and now he's they, they, they basically it's failed. You know, his whole mm-hmm. career worked toward those goals and that those goals failed. Absolutely. So, uh, so good. So good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm brimming with excitement and, and hope for, for this series. And I'm excited because Kurtzman said that we're getting, uh, both the, the ridged Romulans and the smoothed head Romulans. So we might actually be getting a, an answer to that out of all these years. Well, I think the answer, if we're getting both, the answer is probably just, there's different kinds of Romulans. I mean, we also, I mean, we also okay know there's that. like Remans, <laughs> like are apparently cousins. Like Nosferatus. <laughs> yeah. They're like, it's like, seems like being Romulan is a spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, that was. I've always hated that, but whatever. <laughs> right, but but it just seems like they're going with this broad definition of Romulans can be all the things you've seen as Romulans, and I mm-hmm. guess I'm guessing they'll probably do something similar with the Klingons. Although it's just kind of dumb with the Discovery Klingons, where it's like they're all Klingons and they all look the same. Like it'd be one thing if they had some Klingons that looked weird uh, in, mm-hmm. in discovery. And then you had some that looked like classic Klingons, uh, mm-hmm. and maybe even some that looked like original series Klingons, whatever. But like, they all look the same and they're all that weird double nostril shit. Um, okay. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Why did I bring that up? Uh, this, <laughs> quote just, unquote, that weird double nostril shit. <laughs> <laughs> So, I am so right. so excited. Give me the, the 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 single thing you're most excited about to see in this this season. All whether, the things, whether you know it's coming or not. What? I don't. Know. I don't know whether it's something that's revealed or something that like in the trailers or something that like. Like I'm really excited to see Hugh and Seven Nine uh, in some sort of assault team on that board and on like the board cube or whatever. Like, I'm really excited Here's, about that, but I'm yeah. also excited to see uh, if we hear about lore. You know, like, it could be anything. Yeah. Um, weirdly enough, right now, the thing I am most excited about uh, that I know is happening is uh, a more human badass Seven of Nine. Because I watched Voyager all those years wondering, like, when are they going to get to the point where Seven is actually acting like a person? Right. And, yeah. and now it looks like she is. And uh, I I always wanted to see that, that version of Seven where she's like finally moved on. Hmm. Um, I, want, so, I wonder if the same turning inward after the Utopia Planitia incident, I wonder if that same turning inward is what caused the Federation to not pursue helping the Borg. Uh, in their disarray after, mm. after, and I wonder if that's, that's why I, I know we've heard reports of seven of nine is not very happy with the Federation and views, uh, Picard as a representative of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder if the whole thing where he's, you know, turned, like, as I said, turned, turn, the Federation turned inward and turned to protectionism. Um, yeah. All right. Well, uh, I, I think I'm really excited about the new crew, honestly. I don't know him yet. I don't we'll either. I don't either. But I'm really excited about the idea of building a crew. Uh, mm-hmm. And in the things we've seen in the trailer with just like it being sort of a, I mean, for lack of a better term, it's reminding me of Firefly, man. Yeah. It's just like a crew full of people that have their own interests and their own reasons for joining the crew that aren't necessarily, some, some seem like they might be like hired guns and some seem like they might be old. <laughs> some are hired guns, uh, a la Jane. Some are old friends, a la, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> A la Zoe, you know, like, well, actually, it's it's the black woman too. Is 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 an old friend? Like, it just it just feels like uh, an old friend from times when they were at war together. You know, like it just it feels yeah. like they're putting putting together a Firefly style crew with Picard at the helm, and that's just awesome. <laughs> 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 that's like something I never knew I could get in my yeah. lifetime. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm just excited about Allison Peel. Uh, yeah, me too. Me. Oh, I'm oh, so Allison. excited. She, I, oh, Allison, my love. She's a weird mm. mix of Kaylee and Simon. So, so, somebody, somebody's doing some Firefly stuff on this, you know? I have been brought Allison Peel and Star Trek. Mm, my loves. <laughs> 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 oh, well, I think that's about all the time we got 
for tonight. It is 4 a.m. We it stayed is. up to bring you guys this immediately after the episode. So we did. We watched it and then we recorded for a full hour on it. So yeah, I hope you That's enjoyed. Uh, if you're if you're new to the cast, please uh, hit us up. We're at Star Trek UCast on all the places. Um, and uh, yeah, you can sh- shoot us shoot us a review on Apple Apple iTunes things like that. That would be very mm-hmm. helpful. Apple Podcasts or whatever really really helps us out and helps people find the show. Uh, we uh, are appreciative of you guys checking us out, and we'll be back soon with more Star Trek Picard and just go. Oh, and I, I guess I should mention this. Uh, I'm going to be writing a song. Uh, I'm a musician, and I'm going to be writing a song about every episode of Picard. So I will be writing an episode, a song about this, and we'll be dropping it in the feed in a few days, as well as another episode where we kind of uh, maybe dig a little deeper. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to. We dug. I don't pretty, think we, we can. We dug pretty deep, honestly. So we might just drop the song. Uh, yeah, drop your song. I think we're good. I think we were pretty good. We'll, we'll, we'll see how we feel in a couple of days. Uh, we yeah. may be like, I got, I got things to say. Um, but yeah, we went pretty deep on this. Uh, so, I got shit needs to get off my mind. So if if, if you if you if that sounds interesting to you, please stick around and please check out check the feed because I'll be uh, dropping a Star Trek Picard episode one related song, mm-hmm. and I'm 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 excited about it because this episode had a lot going on, a lot going on for it, and so and it'll be really look, fun. All of his Picard Primer episodes were badass. So yes, I mean, that's actually something to look forward to. I know as a podcast listener, I will go. That's I'm not going to listen to that, but I'm telling you, you'd be wrong. I will thanks. listen to them. Thanks, man. And I worked really hard. Uh, I made a 10 song album uh, about sort of the life and times of Picard, Data, and the Borg uh, in preparation for this. Uh, this. And uh, hey, uh, yeah, just as we're going to have so many new people, I'm going to throw uh, uh, the, the, the first one uh, is most related to this episode, too. Uh, uh, no, the song No uh, is about measure of a man, which uh, will mm-hmm. actually be on Spotify and iTunes in a couple days. I'm going to drop it at the end of this episode just so you guys can, any any newcomers can hear that and maybe be inspired to follow along with the progress of this next 10 song album. It's going to be about Picard, the series. So yeah, It's a great song too. My, my wife Thanks. and I still sing that around the house. It's weird. That's awesome. That makes me feel good. Thank you for oh, that. Oh yeah, man. I, I wasn't lying when I said it was an earworm. Yeah, I, uh, I, I I sing it myself. This, I mean, this this song that I would play is the reason I wrote the whole album, and actually the reason I'm writing both albums. I guess <laughs> because I got inspired, wrote a data song, and then I just ended up going real deep on it for the last 15 weeks and wrote an album, and now I'm starting another one. So uh, this one will be on iTunes in three weeks or so. And yeah, man, yeah, super pumped. Uh, all right. And if you want to hear those songs, they're all in, in our podcast feed in the Picard Primer episodes. Uh, so go check out those if you like uh, if you like what we did today. And if you like this song that is right here, peace. Live long. Bask in the prosper. I'm a metal man with a positronic brain, but you don't own me. No. You don't own me. I'm a metal man with a positronic brain, but... This man wants to take me apart He says because I don't have a heart I can't take a stand But I think I can I have served this ship for many years Because I believed In what we'd achieve We'd find new life And we would recognize I can't believe I stand on trial Not because my actions are vile But because you can't See all I am I know what it is to wrong and lose Yeah, I've known love A fully functional love I'm a metal man with a positronic brain But you don't own me Then
there will be more like me A perpetual slavery Unless we stand Me and my friends And defend new life It's different from your life But I just want to choose life I'm a metal man with a positronic brain But you don't own me, you don't own me I'm a metal man with a positronic brain But you don't own me, you don't own me I'm a metal man with a positronic brain But you don't own me, you don't own me I'm a metal man with a positronic brain But you don't own me, you don't own me to reach out to us, hit us up at StarTrekUcast.com, at StarTrekUcast on Twitter, or search for the Star Trek Universe Podcast on Instagram or Facebook. And if you want to hear more from David C. Robertson, search for the DC On Screen Podcast in your podcast app now, or go to Maladjusted.tv for his comedy sketches. If you want to hear more from me, Matthew Carroll, search for the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast or the Orville Universe Podcast in your podcast app, or check out my music. Just search for Matthew Carroll wherever you listen to music. 